So today I wanna to share with you a very simple thing that you can do that will have a huge impact on your sleep. And that is to be intentional when it comes to your sunlight and artificial light exposure. I recently listened to this amazing podcast by Andrew Huberman, who is a ophthalmologist and neurologist, as well as a professor of neurology out of Stanford. And it really just re-energized my interest in this topic because he does such a great job at explaining the science behind why light exposure and non-exposure is so important to our body clocks. I definitely recommend that you check out his podcast, The Huberman Lab, and listen to episode two. He gets into lots of detail about how our eyes help to control our body clock. And if you're a science nerd like me, you're gonna eat every second of it up. But today I want to explain this concept from a very simple perspective and give you some tips on ensuring that you're getting light exposure at the right times so you can feel and sleep your best. It never ceases to amaze me how sophisticated and intelligent our bodies are. Our bodies know exactly what time of day it is based on the sun. And how it works is that we have these little neurons in our eyes that captures information from light and then sends signals to our circadian rhythms that control not only our sleep, but also our digestion, our mood, our metabolism, our wound healing, as well as skin turnover. And what these neurons do is they capture different information from the light that's entering our eyes, such as the angle in which the light is hitting our eyes, as well as the contrast between red and yellow light, as well as blue and green. There's two key times a day when our eyes communicate to our brain where we're at in our sleep and awake cycles. And that is at sunrise and sunset. So at these two times, the sun is lower in the sky, and so the rays are hitting our eyes at about a 45 degree angle. And also there's a lot of, in the morning, a lot of blue and green light. And so in the morning, what this does is it sends a signal to our adrenal glands to start producing cortisol, which is the alert hormone. And I know cortisol gets a bad rap, but we actually need it in our system to feel awake. So you want cortisol in the morning because what's going to happen, it's going to rise gradually and then start to dip um, in the afternoon so that your body can then unwind before bed. This um, signal also tells the um, penile gland to suppress melatonin, which is the sleepy hormone. And it also programs it to start producing melatonin about 14 hours or so later. So if you think about it, it's brilliant. Um, what this allows us to do is to wake up when the sun is rising and fall asleep when the sun is setting so that we can maximize daylight and maximize our productivity during the day. Now, this worked really well back when we were sleeping outdoors and we didn't have artificial light. The problem now, and especially during um, the pandemic, is that we're inside in the morning. We're not um, going to work anymore um, early in the day, so we're not getting that sunlight exposure to kickstart our cortisol. And to top it off, we tend to be on our devices at night, scrolling Instagram, watching television, binging Netflix, um, finishing up some work, and that's problematic because our screens emit blue and green light. So that's gonna send a signal to our brain that it's daytime and our bodies are gonna to wanna to produce cortisol instead of melatonin. Also, what is completely unfair is that these neurons in our eyes are more sensitive to light at night versus in the morning. So any little bit of light exposure in the evening is really going to wreak havoc on your body clock. So due to our modern lifestyle, we are not getting enough light during the day, but getting too much light at night. No wonder why so many of us are not sleeping well. So first off, as Andrew Huberman recommends, get outside early in the morning and at sunset for just two to 10 minutes. That's all it takes to activate these neurons. And make sure that you're not wearing your sunglasses in the morning 
but you also don't want to stare at the light because that's gonna be painful and cause damage to your eyes. So what I've been doing is I've been taking my dog for a quick spin around the block at those times and I have noticed a huge difference in my energy levels. Secondly, if for some reason you can't get out in the morning, maybe you have a newborn baby or perhaps you live in the Midwest like I do and at times it could be very frigid, you are gonna want to invest in a happy light. You can purchase them on Amazon, they're about $50 and what they do is they emit that blue and green light that we get from the early day sun. And you're gonna sit by it from anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. Um, the manufacturer will give you instructions. And one thing that I have found helpful is to sit by it when I do my emails in the morning or drink my coffee. The third thing you wanna do is to wear blue blocking glasses after sunset. And not just any old blue blockers, you wanna make sure that they block at least 95% of the blue light. My favorite brand is Stockholm Squared. They are manufactured by two lovely ladies who are childhood friends, Mimi and Maria. They're both from Sweden and um, they embrace the Scandinavian lifestyle of simple solutions for a healthy life. And they have the most beautiful yet effective blue blocking glasses. And they have a nighttime pair that does the trick perfectly because they block out 95% of the blue light. And the nice thing about wearing the glasses is that you're not only protecting yourself when you're looking at screens, but also your artificial light. A lot of my clients will say, well, I'm just gonna forego the blue blockers and make sure that I put night mode on my devices, which does you know, help and it works. But wearing the glasses, you're gonna make sure you protect yourself from all light source sources, not just your devices. My fourth and last tip is that in the evening, instead of having your can lights on full blast, you know, those overhead lights, um, use lamps instead. That's because the overhead lights are shining directly on you, just like the sun would at high noon. So it's gonna tell your body clock that um, it's lunchtime, not bedtime. If lamps aren't possible and you only have the overhead lights, just make sure you have them on the lowest setting. Also, another nice thing you could do is during your bedtime routine, turn off the lights completely and use a candle, especially a candle that's scented with lavender or chamomile because those scents induce relaxing feelings. So you might be thinking like I did, well, I'll just look out my window instead of going outside. Well, that may not be as effective. As Andrew Huberman explains in his podcast, it can take 50 to 100 times longer to absorb the amount of light that's needed to send those signals because the light is filtered. So I hope that these tips have inspired you to be mindful of your light exposure. I would love to hear if you try them out and if you notice a difference in terms of your sleep and energy levels during the day. I bet you will.